Alright, good morning everybody. Or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. I love the computer on. How's it going guys? Welcome to Epic's Bootcamp. In Epic Street. This is not a load service. I'm not going to make you direct trade recommendations. But hopefully you learn something during the course of this presentation. So what's going on guys? Everybody's kind of filing in yet. I thought today, um, I thought today, hey Tobias, yeah, is the uh, sound all good? I thought today what I'd do is, I don't know if you guys, um, do you guys know right now, and I'm not trying to, I'm not going to sell you something, but the, what you're doing at, what you're doing at Apex Bootcamp now is the first sort of 30 minutes of every session is actually live, and you can access it for free, um, and, you know, you can listen to myself or Rob or Wayne or whoever put together a trade plan for the day and then it's recorded and you can watch it at your leisure. I don't know if you guys know that. I've been posting it on the blog, but all you've got to do is click the link. And honestly, normally I run for like 45 minutes anyway. But I run you through exactly what I'm going to be looking at for the day. So I highly encourage you to come along to that, yeah? If you think there's some value to a trade plan for the day. So, how many of you, are, how many of you follow that? Because it's basically what I want to teach you now. It's just the process of what, you know. I think, I think a lot of folks, a lot of folks get stuck in trading and analytically. I'm not necessarily the, from the trading aspect, but just analytically, they just get stuck in that they don't really have a routine that they go through. They don't really have a process. In other words. They don't really have a starting point. Right? Well, yeah, that's, that's absolutely more beneficial, right? So Tobias is, tries to, but he gets his plans going first, and you should. Right? Everybody's got dissenting voices on trading. You don't have to agree, or, you know, you don't necessarily have to agree with, uh, with what my plans are. Sometimes you might, sometimes you won't. Um. But yeah, I would encourage you to come along. They're absolutely free, so I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm just telling you because I think it'll benefit you. Alright? I believe it is getting recorded, yes. Okay, so, anyway, so what I wanted to do today is I'm going to cover like a 20 minute little spiel I have. And then, um, and then I'll just throw it out to you question wise and I'll pick up as many questions as we have on the allotted time and We'll move on with our lives. Sound good? I have different, I have different, um, a different entry. So the question is, how do you react when price moves to 10 to 12 pips in the area? I have sort of different little confirmation techniques that I look for depending on the different type of entry. If you want to remind me of that question in 20 minutes, I'm more than happy to get back to that. It'll probably make more sense. Okay, so, what is the first thing that you guys look at when you attack your charts for the day? And we're not really going to deal with trading today. We're going to be, we're going to deal more with, um, we're going to deal more with analysis. Why did I buy the Aussie today? Just, I think it's, um, well, it's a good question, 007. Let's, let me get to that during the presentation as it goes, I think it'll make more sense. Make sense? So Sylvester says, well, we look for entry points. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so in other words, if I can sort of summarize the responses, all of which are correct, by the way, and I don't think that, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in that there's no, I don't believe that there is a 100% right or wrong way to go trading, all right? It's like many people play different styles of, you know, many professionals play different styles of tennis, but they all make millions of dollars, you know? Everybody's got a different golf swing on the PGA Tour, but they all make millions of dollars. So it's important that you establish a routine that is appropriate for you and something that's... But I do think that there's some rough guidelines that you can use uh, as good starting points. 
All right. So for myself, I like to just look for something on the chart that makes sense. Any type of trade, absolutely. Whether it's a swing, tr spot trade, scout, whatever. Any type. So for me, you see, for me, my most important thing for the day is bias. All right? And, you know, bias, you might be right or wrong 50% of the time. Who knows? Okay? It's an educated guess at the end of the day. All of this is. All right? But I want to know directionally kind of what I have in mind. All right? In other words, and let's face it, the correlation, I've, I've been trading six years now, and honestly, in the six years, I've never seen more rough correlation than I've seen over this last week and a half. It's every currency for itself. You cannot, you know, typically one walks into the market and you'll have a dollar bias. You'll be like, oh, what's the dollar going to do today? Then you'll find something strong versus weak, preferably relative to the dollar, and you'll go to work from there. Right now, it's, what do I think the pound's going to do? What do I think the euro's going to do? What do I think the yen's going to do? What do I think the Aussie's going to do? It is outrageous. Yesterday, you can ask the people in class, we were looking to long the euro and short the Aussie and do nothing on the pound. And aggressively do both. Aggressively sell the Aussie, buy the euro, and stay flat and aggressively stay flat. Yeah, thank you. All right? So everything is, at the moment, entitled to go in a separate direction, with the exception of maybe the Swiss and the Euro. We're seeing good correlation there. All right? So I like to look for something on the... So this, this is a ambiguous statement, but just bear with me. I like to look for something on the chart to begin the day that makes sense to me. So if I look at a Euro chart and... I don't really know what's going on. I look at it and, and I'm, you know, I'm in two minds as to which way I think it's going to go. I then might look at an Aussie dollar chart. And I'm talking about, when I say a chart, I'm talking about a daily, a four hour. Alright? When I was in the army and we did, uh, I was in ranger school and we did navigation stuff, they'd always teach you, well, jungle warfare, if ever you lost in the, lost in the jungle, you should always try to climb higher up and look over the canopy and get the lay of the land, then you can immerse yourself back in the jungle floor and sit in azimuth and go there. Sort of the same thing for trading. I don't think you can get too granular with it without taking a wider spectrum look at things, even if you're trading on the very short term. Alright? Yeah, I kind of do top up and then top down with kind of a few variations, but... Well, that's it, right? That's a double, yeah, up, down, or sideways, pretty easy business, isn't it? Um, but anyway, so I like to look for something that makes sense. Alright, now if you watched, if you watched yesterday's video, um, which is available on our website, you can, you'll notice that we picked up on one thing today that made sense to us. Okay? And it was completely unrelated to what we were actually targeting to trade. Alright, so for me today, this was the case. Alright, we rolled into town. And honestly, I saw the euro trying to make higher lows. And I saw the Aussie had changed trend on the 15 minute, but I still wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid. It's been bearish for a long time. Alright, but we rolled into town today. And this is what I noticed. Yeah, let me clear some stuff up here. Okay. And I don't want to... I want to make this as sort of clean as possible here. Okay. Alright, there we go. That'll probably make a little more sense. Alright, so I logged in today, and I wasn't 100% sure. I could have, I actually, I actually thought the euro could drop down to sort of 129.80 initially, and then I saw it going long. I thought that the Aussie could jog down more towards sort of 104.30 and then get long 104.40. But I logged in, and the first thing I see is the Swissie here. 
right? Forget the fact that there's a big fat red candle. Price is up here. Okay? And it's hitting this. Now, forget the fact that it's happened. All right? And you can go back on the video and look. We talked about it. Forget the fact that it's happened. What do you think is going to happen on the Swissie? Do you think you're going to run right through that area potentially? You think you're just going to rip right? You're probably not going to roast that area on the initial shot. You might penetrate that area a little bit, but you're probably not going to rip right through it on the first go around. All right? Additionally, here's a dollar index chart. Now, the correlation, I will concede, the correlation has been a little rough. But here's the DX. Notice this massive wet low right there. Look. So you're coming off, you're coming off this wet low area, and yet that roll reversal zone. Chances are you're going to have some red. So what's the implication there? What does that mean for you on some other stuff? I mean, it's just general terms. Forget the Swissy. Forget the Swissy. What would be a general, a general sort of assertion given that intel? Probably going to see some dollar strength. I mean, dollar weakness. Yeah. I mean, a reaction on a daily level. You're probably going to get some dollar weakness involved. All right. So what have you done there? What have you done by making? What have you done by making that decision? What's the first thing we talked? What's the first thing you've done? Yeah. You've developed some kind of rough bias for the day. Just in that quick short decision. Now it might be a swissy chart. Heck, you might look at a Kiwi daily chart and be like, oh, okay. Kiwi daily charts at a major level of resistance. You know, let's say, let's say we log in tomorrow and you notice that the Aussie dollar is back at 106.10. In all likelihood, what do you think is going to happen at that area? Realistically. So we come in tomorrow, it's like 6 o'clock London time and the Aussie has gone up through Asia and is lurking around the early 106s. What do you think is likely to happen? Anybody? Yeah, it's probably gonna probably gonna head down a little bit. Right? That's some serious resistance. It's probably gonna try and roll over just a little bit. So it would have risen the better part of 180, 200 pips right into daily resistance. You have a pretty good authority that you're going to see some red in all likelihood. I say all likelihood because this is trading at the end of the day. Nothing has to do anything. Okay, but probability dictates probably going to try and roll over a little bit. Hey, guess what? You've now found a starting point for the day. Okay, you know, now you say, right, if I'm going to get red on the Aussie, how am I going to go about selling that potentially? What is it going to look like? Is that going to, is the euro going to be at the same sort of resistance? Is this only going to be an Aussie dollar move? Right, but at least you have a starting point. You have a bias for a pair, and then you can work out where you want to go from there. It all kind of leads into each other, right? Okay, so... First things first, developing a bias. Now, I like to develop biases, biases. I don't know what the plural of that is. Well, I think direction is, are we talking, I mean, you're talking about a sort of a nuanced definition there. A bias for me is, what do I think is going to happen? Direction is, what is the established movement for that day? So in other words, my bias was long for the euro, but there wasn't upside direction at the time. Now there's 
direction as well. Now there's upside direction. Okay. So what about, okay, what about, um, and a lot of this is going to come with experience. Is that, I hope that sort of answers your question, Boyke. What about, you log, and I'm a pivot guy too, right? So what happens if you log in and you find, and you look at the Euro USD to notice that it's at its weekly central pivot and daily R2 for the day right around London open towards the 7, 8 o'clock London time. In all likelihood, what do you think is going to happen? You had a weekly central, and you had a daily R2. Probably going to drop. That's going to represent resistance. You're probably going to see some things rolling over. Okay? You know, I always like to set myself a contingency, and I'm not ignoring your questions there, guys. I'll get right to that. You know, I like to have a contingency for stuff as, okay, if it breaks all of that, all right, the writing's on the wall, we're heading up, and I've got to rethink it. But in all likelihood, that's going to represent a turning point. Okay? What about, um, what about the euro has fallen through New York, barely seen any kind of retracement and fallen through Asia, all right, and from New York through Asia into the beginning of London, it's basically fallen in a linear fashion, 240 pips. In all probability, do you think that London is going to want to continue to sell that to them? Probably not. Right, you might see some initial downside push. Right, you might see some initial downside push. It might drop another 40 pips just to get everybody wigging out. But chances are it's going to do an about face. Okay, so just sort of common logic about buy low, sell high makes sense. Okay, now what happens if you log in and, and and you really can't find anything that re is relatable. I mean, you're looking around through the correlation, you're looking around through the crosses, I mean, you're digging through the yens, you've looked at the stock market, you can't get in, can't really glean anything there, you've even gone to a gold chart. Well, now you just start, yeah, now you pick a point. Now you pick your favorite pair, the Aussie, the Euro, and you just start breaking it down. You go to your four-hour chart, you try to glean what you can. You go to your daily chart, you try to glean what you can. And you put together a couple of trade plans, both bullish and bearish, that will put you in a trade. In other words, visually, what is it going to look like? What levels are you going to have to break? What is going to establish a direction and a bias for you? So even if you don't have a bias for that day, and that should be, um, right, it's, it's frozen on purpose. So, yeah, I'm not showing you, I'm not showing you anything other than what I've written. So, in other words, if you don't have a bias for the day, work out what will give you that. Okay, and I'm going to leave that up to you as a technician. All right, and we can we can work on we can work on a problem together. All right, we'll break down a pair just as a as an exercise. All right, so number one, bias. Number two. Let's say, let's say you are biased to the upside. Okay. However, price has already moved. And this is where I think people get it backwards, in my humble opinion. Let's say price has already moved to the upside 80 pips, but you think it's strong and it's going to get stronger. Okay. What is the first thing that you should look for? And it's it's actually counterintuitive. What do you think the first thing is to look for in this situation? So you bullish, but it's already sort of gone up 80 pips. Yeah, you should look for a target. You should say, well, where could this be going? You see, I think a lot of folks I think a lot of folks look for entry without necessarily trying to trying to factor in where it's going, because 
you have to be able to work out a risk reward scenario. Now, how can you work out the reward if you have no idea where it's going, or the type of trade, or the uh, a reasonable level of expectation as to how long this is going to take, how many pips you're going to take, what are the other pairs doing on a correlatory basis? Could the relative strength switch on you? Have you checked your crosses? Yes. Yes. I think working out a target is the most important thing you can do. Is it worthwhile just pursuing this bias? Okay. Now I'm not going to get in, maybe next webinar we can just talk exclusively about targets and projecting targets. Alright. But working out where you think this is going to go, I think is priority number one. After your bias. Right. Then, what is the next thing? You you bullish. You've worked out that your target is feasible. Next thing to do. Right. Where is my support? In other words, I want to buy at support in the context of an uptrend. At least that's the way I tend to trade. Where is my support? In other words, we'll call this a green zone. Where is my green zone? I'm not talking downtown. Where is my green zone? And say differently, if you're bearish and price is wanting to drop, where is my red zone? In other words, where would resistance be for me to short from? And you know what? If price doesn't get to your support zone and goes and hits your target, what happens to your trade plan? Next. Null and void. Moving on to the next one. During the course of a day, I might watch six or seven pairs maximum. It's archived. Much better way to put it. Thank you. Right? If I might put together six or seven trade plans for the day. Maybe more. Do you know how many really realistically come to fruition? 30%. Thirty percent, because my psychological mindset, and this might sound extremely defeatist, but my my psychological mindset is, what can I do today to make thirty to fifty pips? Okay. So my first couple of years of trading, I wanted to make every pip the market had to offer. All right now. I'm a little more grizzled veteran and I think to myself, what can I do to make 30 pips? Yes, Ganster, I, I, I determine targets basically on the higher time frames and then major levels of support and resistance on four and four hours and dailies and then knuckle it down to an hourly and a 15 for real sort of in the moment entry stuff. Yeah, that's, that'll come after that sort of follows on you, Boiti. I just uh, I digressed into psychology there for a minute. But I was just talking about trade plans and quality of trade plans. And I don't want to obviously get sidetracked on psychology, but that for me was the major epiphany. I mean, you want to talk about aha, like breakthrough, what makes one profitable moments? The realization that you have to be pretty freaking ordinary to make a living. Yeah, in other words, get defeatist and get profitable. And that's the first and last time you'll ever hear me use that word. How many days do you... Um, it's seldom that I'll never be able to find an opportunity that is doable. So I would probably say two days a month that I'm not going to be trading on some level. Because typically, um, no, it's not, it can be, it could be more than that, Shan. I don't want to, I mean, it just depends, you know. I think a lot of, a lot of people lose money trading in, you know, people tend to trade more in crummy markets. Where really you should be trading less in crummy markets and trading more in good markets. Yes, absolutely, it's wise. Out of 10 trading days, I probably lose 6. Out of 20 trading days, I probably lose 6. I 
I have some money, English. I mean, it depends. I'm sure, relative to some people, I got no money. Favorite session? I still like London. I've, been, I've just been trading London forever. I got about I got about six out of twenty losing days. Shamefully have to admit. Six years. Well, I'm, I wouldn't say that necessarily my hit rate is 70%. Pretty closer. In fact, it is roughly about 62 to 67, depending on the day, month, and year. Best scalp indicator. Not a scalper, so I couldn't really tell you, to be honest. Right, guys, you only need 50%. Yes, English, I'm getting there, sorry. Okay, after your support and resistance zones, you're now going to look for where is your stop. Time horizon. Okay, time horizon is important, etc. Okay. Break-evens, to me, are not winners. Okay, so this is the general sequence of things, and I think the sequence of things is as important as anything else. All right, because the focus of this webinar was this, right? And this boils down to confluence. All right, where is, what have you come off of to bring you to a certain level, and then where is the most confluence in that zone? Alright? And 007, I hope that this, I hope that this explained why the Aussie was a buy today. It was because the Swissie was a short. <laughs> and we had a change of trend, yeah, with a two hour stochastic cross right at the market open. Okay, so what I mean by time horizon is, when you putting on a trade, when you putting on a trade, is it is this a trade you're gonna be in all likelihood gonna be in? Yeah, I'm talking about this one right here. It's a 15 minute change of trend. So directionally, this chart could change to the upside. I was hoping we would do sort of something like this, but ultimately the, and I use two hour stochastics a lot for bias. Guys, I really apologize if I'm missing your questions, but that in the heart of the trade zone of price history here is pretty, uh, pretty strong bar signal. Get in there, Andrea. Okay. Yeah, I typically have a catastrophic stop and then a manual exit if the trade plan's broken. If it's broken, my red or green one. All right, so let's figure some stuff out, guys. Should we do a? Should we break something down together? What about the yen? Should we talk yenage? All right, let's let's talk kiwi. I haven't looked at kiwi for a long time. Alright, you know, uh, uh, recanting that. We're gonna do the, we're gonna do this yen just because we push for time and it's ob it's in front of us, so let's do it. Okay. So, the first thing I like to do here is, the first thing I like to do with this is just on a 15 minute chart, alright, and I'm gonna develop this in terms of a, a bias for the right now and a bias for like the next few days. Okay, so here is a 15 minute chart, 
And what would you say directionally we have been doing today? Dropping, right? Making a series of lower lows and lower highs while our moving averages to the downside. Yeah, we've dropped the better part of 100 pips. Pretty significant. Pretty significant. So realistically, do we want to sell it at these lows realistically? No, probably not. Even if it falls another 100, probably not a great place to short. Alright? Just because it's because it's fallen a pretty good clip, and we've been in an overall uptrend. All right. So initial impressions. Initial impressions here are downtrend for the day. Okay, and this here is actually a pretty good little short, based on the double top, etc., and the break below. All right, let's go to our four hour and we'll circle back. Okay, on our four hour here, are there any observations that seem any observations that seem important? Thanks, Kevin. We are swing fibbing our way up there. If we grab a fib here. And I'd encourage you to look at some of my other, other videos to sort of glean a little bit as to how I go about trading. So this is our 382 we're sitting at. Our 50% is at 83, the cycle level. Okay. And at this point, we're not trying to develop a trade plan. Okay, I want to make that clear. All we're trying to do is gather information. All right, that's it. Gather intel. All okay, sorry, I'm just uh, getting some pivots lined up here. All right. Well, I did briefly explain it. So what I mean by time horizon is just, it's, I think it's important to determine what type of trade you're going to get in, how long it's going to take. Is it a trade you're going to be in for an hour? Where are you in proximity to the next major market open? You know, if it's a move fib sort of trade, a, tr a fib of the whole rise or something, it's probably going to take three hours. If it's just a quick continuation trade, it's probably going to be 45 minutes. I like to know this stuff before I get in it so I can prepare myself mentally. Get in the zone. Alright. But, so we've got our 382 right where we are. And the next level here is probably 83 psych level plus this 21 EMA, which is sharply pointed up, isn't it? Now we go zooming out for a little bit of, you know, is there any other major visual that you can see here? Not really. Okay. Anything else on this chart that's intriguing to you in any way, shape, or form? Those stochastic users are probably looking at that going, well, hang on a minute. Alright, so you got a little bit of downside, a little bit of downside pressure there. Alright, now let's go to our daily chart. Never looks key. Alright, so you're coming up 84 psych level. You've got the 5 EMA, which is basically the 4 hour 21 at 83, the psych level again. Okay, but let me show you this. And load. Okay. 84.90 is a very significant level. Is it not? Have we hit that? No, we haven't. But it's a very significant price level. And I'm sure a lot of people are watching that. Okay? It looks parabolic, but don't get ahead of yourself. Alright, just something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind on this. Alright, so, you know, we'll call it 85 to 86 as a major upside target. Right, let's go back to our data. 
can I remember those four hour stochastics were just cross into the downside, correct? I kind of did in between, boy. I started at 15, worked my way up, and then worked my way back down. Make sure I've covered all my bases. Okay. So, where are we likely to find a pretty good amount of support? Would we concede that this is a buy zone based on the four hour swing fib, the psych level? And these key moving averages. Thanks, Kevin. Could we concede that that's the case? Guys, by the way, indicators, you should, you should not follow indicators, by the way. You know that. You should lead indicators. You should not follow indicators. That is the number one quickest path to the poor house. Okay, so daily, we've worked out, we've got no real visual support, but we know that that 8490 area is significant. So, is it possible that we're going to do sort of something like this? Maybe nudge a higher high. Come back down to around 81. And then continue for about a 400 pip trade. Is that feasible? Why? Why would we think that this is going to retrace significantly next week? Yeah, because we've got those four hours down and we're hitting rough, we're running into that resistance. So chances are we're going to come off this five, hit up for a couple of days, and then fall on its face. But then, you know, we're going to come right to this 21 EMA, these previous swing highs, and, you know, the little fibulous rise, and 81 and change, and we're going to go up 400 pips. You dig? So what have we done? We've established a short-term bias, and we're going to continue down. We've established a medium-term long here for maybe 150 pips. We have worked out we're going to drop for 300, and then we're probably going to rise for about 500. And that should encompass the next 10 days of trading. Yes, I do, Boyki. Okay, now let's go back to a four hour and see how we can corroborate this. Alright. I get I get fifty percent wrong and I get fifty percent right, roughly. I like to think it's better than that, but it's pretty pretty close. Okay. So we've probably got a little trend line action going on here. But look, we've got a confluence area now between the trend line, that 21 EMA, the psych level of 83, and the 50% of this rise. Actually, it's going to be more like the 50% of 6 on 8. So where do you think the yen is likely to bounce from today? I'm talking bounce as in could, could be the bottom to make higher highs. Yeah, pretty around 82.80 to 83. So many, yeah. Okay. So is it possible that you could build a trade plan to short yourself down today? In other words, look for a red zone. Remember what I said? Remember what I said about trying to ask, trying to work out a target first. Can you see the value of that? Because now we've said to ourselves, right, we are bears until it hits 82.80. Well, we've now got a short-term bias, a target, now we need a red zone. Because at the end of the day, it's in an uptrend solvent. 
This is just a short-term retracement. Could it break that area? Sure, but that's why you use price action in this area to confirm a change of trend. All right, so now we go, you know, and this here, you see, and I will notice how this four hours pointing down, okay? So I will concede this. I don't know if it's going to make higher highs of that bounce. But what I can tell you is that in all probability, it's going to head back to at least the red zone of that drop, which is a decent spot trade, is it not? That's a 50, 60 pip proposition right there if you're smart about it. Okay, now as long as we haven't hit this area, we have permission to look for a, we have permission to look for a short, have we not? So now let's talk about that. It's dropping right now. But here's your hourly chart. Okay, so we have got a, we have got a daily central pivot at 83.45, call it 83.50 for argument's sake. You've also got this previous swing low here at 50. Hesitation area. Candle couldn't close below there. And, you know, just sort of a general little congestion area there. If I take a fib of this drop, 83.50, Eighty-three fifty-five is the three eight two. You know, if I'm willing to take it aggressively, which I'm less inclined to do by virtue of the fact that it's already dropped the country mile. The fifty percent is at eighty-three fifty-one, and our central pivot is at eighty-three forty-five. So we have a confluence area here, don't we? Okay, and it also happens that the fib extension here. This potential 50% taking us to 1382 is also that support area that we worked out. Okay, so now we say to us, now we have now we have the makings of a trade plan, don't we? Now if it just drops off a cliff here and goes and tags our support area, all right, let's say this thing just cruises red here and just says, you know what? I'm not picking you guys up. You've had ample opportunity to short me. It just comes down here. Okay. You know, you're going to have this five coming down. Chances are you're going to do something like this. Bounce off it, higher, low, get up, and then, you know, drop all the way back down again. But you have, you know, that's your next trade plan. Green zone to red zone. That doesn't mean anything right there. Yeah, never pay attention to, never pay attention to stochastics overbought or oversold like that. Pay attention to it when it's in the trade zone. You know, when it's rolled up and it's actually in the trade zone, that's your directional indicator. Don't use stochastics as entry signals. You'll be massively disappointed in life. Yeah, use, if you're going to use stochastics, as I like to call it, stochastics, use it as a directional indicator, not an entry trigger. Yeah. Okay, so now we have... Alright, so now we need to sort of highlight what we want. Okay, this is... a red zone. Okay. And this is... a green zone. And I like to just mark them with little circles so I know what's going on. Yeah, just areas where I'd like to buy and sell it. So what I'm thinking here is this. You know, if it comes back here, spot trade short. Okay, look for short term failure here. You, you know, how you execute the trades in these zones, we can spend three webinars on. Okay, and then look and use your appropriate price action down here. And this is a zone. These are zones, guys. I'm not a big believer in, you know, we can pick a number, but ultimately trading the zones is a little easier. Fun. Okay? And then we have ourselves a long bias from here. 
back up to right where it came from. Then at that point, you know, at that point, it's going to be, you know, at that point, it's going to be a, a, a bit of a challenge, right? Because you, you know, we come down here, bounce up there, you know, that are we going to make higher lows and continues, or are we going to make lower high and head down? You'd have to work that out. I mean, I, I don't know if they, Boyka, honestly, don't think they either. I think this is just support and resistance, fibs and pivots. Right now, actually. So, that is an illustration of how to find your buy and sell zones. I go from down to up, top to bottom. Yeah, it is. I, I, um, I think it's downloadable on the website. If it's not, just email me. David at epicsbootcamp.com. Okay, and that's, and then obviously the next thing you want to do is place some strategic alarms here. And what I also like to do is have a contingency plan in mind. In other words, what level, if it breaks, do I change my mind? And looking at this, I probably don't want to see this zone broken. You start to break this, you know, you start to get through this stuff, and I'm like, you know, you start to get to there, and, you know, we're probably looking at something more like that. But, and, and the other thing is, if you hit the target first, be very careful trading a pullback after hitting the target. Your chances of success are, some, are massively diminished after that. Okay, and there you go. You have a trade plan. And let's say price comes up here and doesn't hit your red zone, or price comes down here and doesn't hit your buy zone. Guess what? You just don't trade it. Right? Move on to the next plan. What's well, like something? It's like something like this. English. You know, let's say you have a major four-hour trend line coming down like this. You know, price has been bouncing off it. And then, you know, you decide, right, I want to long it to that trend line. And you try to get in it, you try to get in it, and just keep sort of going here. And it doesn't give you, it doesn't give you a conservative entry. So, now you, you know, now it hits the trend line, it comes back into your green zone. After hitting the target, because your target was the trend line, right? So now, yeah, it's in your buy zone, but you've already hit the target. So what you're now saying is, well, am I going to pick up more buyers here than I got sellers at the target? You don't know. Your your edge is gone. You know, it's you don't know at this point. It's questionable. Where you know that until you've hit that resistance, you're likely to pick up buyers every step of the way because of the direction you have. You know, and if you hit the target here, chance, normally, yeah, you'll get a little blip on the radar and then boop, and then you're sitting there holding the bag, going, well, why don't I just short the resistance in the downtrend? Make sense? Uh, if it breaks 83.60, yeah, I mean, we'll probably have to look at, at the next support level and trade it down to that. Well, if it pulls back after hitting the target, I mean, there's just a lot of times you get it, it won't, it won't respect the fib. You know, if you've got, if let's say you have a weekly central, a weekly central pivot and daily reversal pivot points. And price goes up. Da 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 da. Doesn't get let you in. Goes and hits the target. The con, 
you know, this is the conservative target for the day. Then comes back to your Fib zone. Many, 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 many times it'll just do this. So I'll only trade pullbacks up until it's at the target. And then at that point, my confirmation changes here. I need to see a lot of sort of higher lows and things. I need to see a lot of higher lows after hitting the immediate resistance to get in it. Then I'm confident it's going to head up. Uh, almost no. News? Barely. Honestly, I look at the calendar to make sure I'm not trading right into a news announcement, but no. Has very little bearing on what I do. I'm a simple guy, African educated, has to be simple. Has to be. Betty read and write. Anyway guys, if there are any questions yeah, thank you. Oh that's silly humor for the day. Are there any questions? Otherwise thank you. Um yeah, I'm kidding, Wiki. Alright, so you don't... Yes, exactly English. Yep. Thank you, Sylvester. I appreciate it. Thanks for the feedback. Um, Chaos Theory Bulls. I will. I will more. I was just waiting for... Uh, Wayne was supposed to take care of it, I think I'm just going to have to do it myself and get, get that to you. What, what if price is just short? If it just drops and never hits your zone, then move on to the next trade plan that does fit into your plan. Yeah, next time we'll do triggers and targets. How's that sound? Triggers and targets. That's a catchy one. Yeah, yeah guys, as far as... Okay, hear me out here. Log in... Okay, I've started... Um, just until the, year, until the UK changes back. But I've been starting at 6 a.m. GMT. Log in live, and I'll cover two currencies every day, and put together a trade plan, as in buy here, sell there. And you get to see me take it, break it down every day. And you can log in at epicsbootcamp.com, it's 100% free, nobody's, te nobody's trying to charge you for anything, and watch the videos, and you're going to get like hundreds of examples of this. Okay? It just gives me time, Ray, right? two hours before the London Open. This gives me time teaching four hours. This gives me time to... Uh, it just gives me time to make sure I've covered all my bases and maybe talk about apiary management and maybe catch up on the cricket score or something. Yeah, six, six GMT. That's for this week and next week. But starting in April, starting in April, we go back to where well, it'll still be. Uh, it, yeah, it'll still be six. It'll be ten o'clock. It'll be one a.m. Eastern, so an hour earlier. Every day. Correct. Yep. Anyway, Maud, thanks for having me, guys. I hope you learned a little something, got a little something out of it. Um, also, Forex David for my Twit feed. That's a very good way to ask me questions. I have Twitter up all the time. Unfortunately, Glenn, yes. Forex David. Alright? Talk to you guys soon.